Abby Malloy and I am a sophomore biology major at Whitman College. Today, I am going to be investigating gender differences from a biological perspective. As humans, we have created a number of assumptions about what distinguishes between genders, whether social or biological. In this investigation, I will be using examples of animal behavior and physiology to deconstruct these assumptions. According to Joan Roughgarden in her book Evolution's Rainbow, the word male is defined by producing small gametes, or sperm, while the word female is defined by producing large gametes, or eggs. That's it. The only difference that biologists recognize. The words man and woman, on the other hand, are social categories created by humans to define the cultural expectations of each sex. So how are these terms, man, woman, male, and female, related or contradictory? Let's take a look at a few of our gender expectations and stereotypes to see how they play out in the animal world. For our purposes, we'll focus exclusively on the vertebrates because they're most closely related to us. Even more complicated variability occurs within the invertebrates, but that's for another time. Let's begin with one of our most basic assumptions, that males have XY chromosomes and females have XX chromosomes. Although this seems like a clear distinction, in many birds, including domesticated poultry, the opposite is true. And in alligators and crocodiles, sex is determined by the temperature at which the eggs are raised, not the chromosomes. Another seemingly concrete stereotype is that females give birth, not males. There are many species in which males raise the young, but in pipefish and seahorses, the female actually deposits her eggs in the brood pouch of the male, who fertilizes them. These offspring mature in the pouch of the male until they're ready to be released. In humans, as well as most mammals, we define the penis as an exclusively male organ. However, the female spotted hyena has a penis-like structure externally identical and with similar function to that of males. The urogenital canal runs through the structure, defining it as a penis. These animals are not hermaphroditic, as one might expect, because they still produce only one gamete size. So, we have evidence of a true female mammal with a penis. Finally, let's examine the expectation that an organism remains solely male or female for life. The bluehead wrasse is a coral reef fish in which three genders are found. One, in which individuals are born male and remain male, one which is born female and remains female, and one which consists of individuals who begin female and change into male when an existing large dominant male is removed, to replace him. So what does all this mean for humans and the way that we define gender? These assumptions, though true for most humans, are not universally significant. And if our biological assumptions are not universal, what does that say about the social expectations that we have imposed on men and women? Think about it. And thank you so much for considering my application.